Hello, everybody. This is One for the Table. I am John Kung. I am Kim Chi. Today, we are going to talk about what did we say the topic was today? Chinese regional Chinese food. That's right. We're trying to talk about Chinese food today. Mm-hmm. We'll see if we can stay on topic. Oh, we will we'll make sure to stay on topic. We can so, try. Do you have ADHD? No. No? Oh, no. I do. Okay. No. Yeah. Anyways, you're already going off topic. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> oh. <laughs> but anyways, um, I want to talk about regional Chinese food in particular because growing up, a lot of times I hear this general statement, um, mostly from Americans, about how, oh, I don't like Chinese food. And I personally find this statement to be really, really like an ignorant thing to say because when it comes to Chinese food, there is so much variety. And what they usually mean by I don't like Chinese food is probably like I don't like American Chinese food. Where it's like, you know, of course, about there's nothing wrong with American Chinese food either. But they're usually talking about like general sauce chicken, like beef and broccoli, mm-hmm. heavily oil soaked dishes. Mm-hmm, yeah. But statement like I don't like Chinese food, I just find it to be a really ignorant one just because, I mean, also it's a country with like the biggest population in the world. You know, like, the food, like, really varies. And how much Americans really know about Chinese cuisine, um, like, their knowledge is very, very limited. Yeah, I would I would definitely agree. So, to say, I guess, like, to use the term Chinese food would be more like using the term, like, European food. Mm-hmm. It's the same kind of scale. There are, like, actually, like, seven or eight major cuisines in China that are just as varied and as just as like diverse um, and so different in the same way that like German cuisine is different from French is different from Italian is different from British like everybody has their own style everybody has their own history like it is the oldest continuing surviving civilization in the world so generally they've had a lot of time to develop all these flavors and stuff um two out of the eight are like notoriously spicy Szechuan and Hunanese cuisine Cantonese Mm -hmm. is the one that most people are familiar with simply because most of the people that emigrated China back in the day and settled into different uh countries are were like of Cantonese origin okay so like wait let's break it down um per Per region, I mean, you don't have to go through mm-hmm. all of them, but um, can you list like some signature dishes from like each region? Like Cantonese, yeah. for example. When I think of like Cantonese cuisine, I think of like um, like food that are softer or like stewy in texture, mm-hmm. um, a little bit sweeter, not mm-hmm. spicy, but it's more like sweet and salty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We definitely do like a sweet and savory balance in Cantonese cuisine. I'm trying to think because I grew up in Hong Kong. And mm-hmm. so I grew up with pretty varied uh, family members. Like my mm-hmm. grandmother and my grandfather came from different regions, I think, on both sides. Um, there was a lot of people that emigrated to like Taiwan and my mom's side of the family. Um, and so like I just grew up eating a variety and not even knowing it. So I think... Chinese brisket is Cantonese. Yes. So uh, Chinese brisket is kind of like it's it's beef brisket. There's it's oftentimes like tendon and radish. And the sauce that they use is something that you would totally think of as Cantonese. It's sweet. It's flavored with orange peel. It's savory. It's rich. It's stewed. That kind of thing. Um, and then you've got uh, Sichuan cuisine, which everybody knows, with about, which is their chili oil. Um, fun fact, uh, most Szechuan chili oil is just spicy. It's just like a red pepper oil with chill, hot chili. It's red chilies mm-hmm. with pepper poured on top of it. It wait, doesn't wait, wait, have wait, wait. the numbing. Let's stay on Cantonese yeah. first. We'll go through all the regions. Oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Yeah, rain me in. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> um, so other things, I mean, Hong Kong cuisine is definitely like, derived from Cantonese cuisine, but mm-hmm. because of the British influence, it's 
definitely come into its own and turned into its own type of thing. I think. Would you consider example, like dim sum mm-hmm. to be like a Cantonese thing? You know, yes. But then, like, there's a lot of things that, like, you eat at dim sum that is, like, actually, like, Shanghainese, which is mm-hmm. a different, which is which is somewhat, di- it's similar, but different. So, Shanghainese, very famous for soup dumplings, xiu long bao, mm-hmm. um, and also the stir-fried rice cakes. You know the the rice cakes that you guys use for the the tuk? Tuk-o, the soup? Tuk-o. Tuk-o. Yeah, the f- yeah, yeah. Tuk-o, the tuk-o, flat sorry. round rice cakes. Yeah, the flat round rice cakes. Shanghainese people will stir fry those with like, mm-hmm. um, a, a, like a sweet and savory sauce, um, and they call that lean go. Meanwhile, if you order lean go in Hong Kong, uh, mm-hmm. you will get like a whole ass cake. Like you will get like a, a sweet cake. Like they, it's the same word but it has different meanings in like two different regions. So I just googled and they said. The most famous Cantonese style cuisine is dim sum. Okay, there it is. But soup dumplings are Shanghainese. <laughs> <laughs> well, soup dumplings aren't really part of like traditional dim sum. Yeah, the dim sum, I think like it might be the act of dining in, mm-hmm. in, se- in general. But people's general idea of what Chinese food is in westernized countries, it, it is normally derived off of like a Cantonese cuisine well still my favorite um cantonese is just then probably turnip cakes really turnip yummy cakes yeah. yeah 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 okay so just to go over like the different region chinese cuisine there's sichuan cantonese hunan shandong jiangsu yes. fujian <laughs> and hui fujian fujian on hui on hui on I don't know that one. And Zhejiang. Zhejiang is the one that's famous for vinegar. So the two spicy ones are Sichuan cuisine and Hunan cuisine. What separates uh, the Sichuan from Hunan? Sichuan, their use of the peppercorns is pretty famous. Uh, the numbing spice, the ma la. So ma is... And my pronunciation, and like for the record, like my knowledge of this is very, very rudimentary, and my Chinese is even worse. So, don't okay, take so my word for it. <laughs> John Kong exposed. Exposed. I didn't. I wasn't exposed. I'm like downright admitting <laughs> it. But Sichuan cuisine uses like ma la, which is ma is the numbing and la is um the spiciness, the actual like pain sensation that you feel when you eat. Um and I I don't know, I feel like Sichuan cuisine is more and this might I might be totally wrong in this association with it, but Sichuan cuisine to me is like vibrant and and like there is reprieve from the spiciness because of the numbing sensation. Hunan cuisine, like Hunan cuisine, does not care whether or not, like it's it's very it's relentless. Like I have gone to a restaurant called Mrs. Hunan in I think Kowloon City in Hong Kong with my mom and little John, and I was just a sweaty mess non-stop there were some dishes that were very very similar that i've had in both Sichuan restaurants and hunan restaurants but hunanese cuisine is just like chilies on chilies on chilies with vinegar and chilies like it is is just doesn't stop being salty with in a good way like flavorful salty and and spicy and it's great but like i am always just drenched Mm. um i think I think they're also really not afraid of like delivering spiciness in oil, which makes everything even spicier. Like it sticks to your tongue so it doesn't wash out. But yeah, it's very good. Um, so. And these are like the colder regions in China, right? So like these hot food is supposed to like keep you warm throughout like the cold winters. I would say so, but the thing is, like, because spicy food makes you sweat, 
Um, that doesn't do a very good job of warming you up because if you get sweaty, then you just get even colder afterwards. So I'm not sure how much how true that is. It might be. I mean, we're going to get comments and I'm going to get tons of people correcting me, I'm sure. But <laughs> yeah. John Kong exposed. <laughs> <laughs> this is the reason why you wanted to do this topic. <laughs> no, I want to do this topic because, you know, we haven't talked about your, like, you know, love of Chinese food. Yeah. Let's see, where else? Uh, uh, Jiangsu and Shandong. Shandong. Shandong, according to um, the World Wide Web, fresh and salty with a lot of seafood dishes. Ooh, squirrel fish. Okay, I know that. I know that one. Um, <laughs> so, I know that one. <laughs> I know that one. So squirrel fish is like, it's actually, it's really, really good. <laughs> so the story goes... Um, there is, I don't even remember the lore behind it, but there is this like, there was this emperor or mayor or, or like official uh -huh. who like really wanted to eat this sp specific type of fish, but for whatever reason it was forbidden. But to get around that, the chef would cut the fish in a specific way that would say like, oh, this is like a different kind of fish or this is a squirrel or something like that. And so like that is like the story behind it. But it's really hard to make because you have to take the fish whole. You have to cut the you have pretty much have to cut the fillets off of the fish, but keep it connected to the tail. So it's still intact. And then you like slice these little pieces. You know, when you cut the mango when you cut the mango into cubes and flip it inside out. Mm -hmm. Imagine doing that with like the two sides of the meat of the fish mm -hmm. and then you batter it and then you fry it so that you have these like blocks of fried, crunchy, tender fish meat. And then they cover it with this sauce that is the base. And like, stay with me. The base is ketchup. It's garlic, ginger. Oh no, it's garlic stir fried with ketchup and soy sauce and like some vinegar and it's really really good mm. like it's so almost so like, very good so almost like sweet and sour it is almost like sweet and sour but like a little bit like i guess and then there's also tomatoes in there too um at least when i make it i put tomatoes in there i stir mm. fried tomatoes in there uh it's it's a little more nuanced but yeah it's really really good um and also what else do they eat so if you ever see like squirrel fish on the menu, you should totally get it. It's not gross. It's it's delicious. It's like a pretty universally likable dish. Okay. Mm, braised cucumbers. Bra I know braised sea cucumbers and like diced pork in a <laughs> pot. Um, those are two that I, I I don't know enough about them to talk about them. But yeah, squirrel fish. I know. <laughs> who who was it that people say? Uh, who said they didn't like Chinese food? And like, what was like the vibe you got from it? It's just, it's something I heard all the time growing up. Um, yeah. Especially like around like my wife friends, like, hey, where do you want to go to eat? Oh, what about Chinese? Oh, I don't like Chinese food. There is such a stigma with mm -hmm. American Chinese food because, and I think like one of the big reasons was that because it was always like considered like a cheap cuisine. Yeah. And because of that, there was, there's like socioeconomic stigma to it. Um, because even though it's like, it's so old in this country, like the mm -hmm. first Chinese restaurant, the first Chinese restaurant opened up in the United States, I think like a hundred years before the invention mm -hmm. of American football. Oh no. 10 years before the invention of American, of American football and like nearly a hundred years before the first Super Bowl. I think that was, that was the date, date range of it. So we've had Chinese food in the United States for a very long time. And it had been continuously been like stigmatized this, this entire time simply because like, like with all things in a capitalist society, okay. like respect never came. Respect doesn't come unless the money came with it. I think we only grew to respect Japanese cuisine mm -hmm. because of, um, in the 80s and the 90s like there was a lot of business being done with japan and so it started to become associated with wealth and and that kind of culture and so 
because you would take these Japanese businessmen to like fancy Japanese lunches and stuff like that, it became something that people respected. But that、mm-hmm. never happened with Chinese food here in the United States until recently. And even now, it's only just starting. People are just realizing that there are so many different kinds. Szechuan chili oil is like, people never heard about chili oil until like 10 years ago. That's true. And now, like, people see it on TikTok and they are putting like chili oil on everything. Like, chili oil、Literally、fried egg, or, oh, I made my ramen, I put some chili oil. Oh, here's my canned oyster, I'm putting some chili oil on it. Yeah, I mean, I'm exactly. Glad. I'm glad, you know, like, chili oil is taking off, but. Yeah, 10 years ago, no one was eating that. Yeah. But also, I'm glad for all these like Asian businesses that are like popping up and doing so well now because more people are looking for Asian condiments. Yeah, for sure.、Um, like Fly by Jing, and like they've got、mm-hmm. like, a fascinating story in XCJ. Like they also have like an amazing story. Did you、mm-hmm. hear they just had a baby? Yeah. Yeah. The XCJ、yeah, they have a dumpling of their own. It's so cute. <laughs> also, um, The condom at the d e x t j ooh, it's so good. Sub cut. So <laughs> good. They are the only people that I know that have like、um, uh, ginger scallion oil. Ginger scallion, yes. Which it's not hard to make, but at the same time, it's a pain in the ass. It's enough、yeah. of a pain in the ass that I'm glad、yeah. that I don't have to make it. So you yeah, you get a bite of green onion,、oil. chop it up,、uh, like grate the ginger, you know. But it's yeah, in a jar, all perfectly ready for you. Yeah. And then、um, I saw that. Um, some, yeah, so um, some really is like, well, I'm not paid to say this, um, but they really we're not paid so- to say any of this, by the way. Yeah, honestly, yeah,、um, we have no sponsors, <laughs> <laughs> so we are looking for some, but anyway, <laughs> right, right. right. Um, some really is just line of like salt and pepper shakers, and there's like three in a order it's salt, pepper, and then one of them is for MSG. Nice, that's cool. Except, uh, do you use MSG like that? I'm asking you. I know a lot of my. Do you sprinkle um, it on it? I know a lot of my Vietnamese friends do. Um, They sprinkle like MSG like into their like soups and like eggs and. Yeah, I like. As a Korean. I like cook it、yeah. into my food, but that's what I do. That's see, that's how I know like the use of MSG. So, like, I would,、mm-hmm. I don't know if I would have it on the table, although, like, I do have a really cute panda MSG shaker.、Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know if I ever think to put it on the table. I have things with MSG in it that I put on the table, but I don't、yeah. know if I would ever like sprinkle the pure because MSG has such a distinctive flavor,、mm-hmm. right? And because it's used in so many processed foods, like if you use too much of it, it tastes like Doritos or、mm-hmm. packet noodle to me. And so, like, it kind of like, I can't have too much of it. Although it is good in like mashed potatoes or like. Yeah. You need to do a, a mashed、mm-hmm. potato MSG video. Like a blend、um, chicken noodle soup or, you know. So it has、mm-hmm. its uses. Yeah. Uh-huh. MSG. Represent. MSG. And in your case mom, you're listening, your going、friends. like, MSG is bad for you. MSG is not bad for you. It is a myth. It is totally a myth and a problematic one that was based on racism. It was based <laughs> on anti Chinese racism.、Um, and, then peop- and then ultimately, people are going to be like, well, I actually have an MSG insensitivity. There are- those sensitivities are so. Like when I was doing research for my book, for example, like、mm-hmm. there was no amount of MSG in any of, I would call for like a quarter of a teaspoon or a teaspoon of MSG at most in some、mm-hmm. of my recipes in my upcoming book. And like no amount that I had in like would warrant me. Like I even wrote in myself because I'm so, I was so like ingrained with this like anti MSG propaganda、mm-hmm. where I was like, I would write it in my es- recipe is like, oh, if you're, If you have a sensitivity to it, just don't put it in. And like one of my editors was like, You didn't ask anyone, you didn't have enough MSG in any of your recipes to warrant this kind of danger. Because in that amount, even people with sensitivities wouldn't detect it. Because a lot,、mm-hmm. what a lot of people don't know is like our bodies make it ourselves. We always have it inside us. It's, it's been inside you、mm-hmm. all along. I know. I first were like, 
Oh, I feel tingly when I eat MSG. I'm like, no, you don't. It's all in your head, you dumb bitch. Right. I feel tingly when I eat MSG, but this ketamine is great. Oh, you literally. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, um, back to Chinese food. Um, yes. Ha- have you eaten a lot of, like, different, like, world variations of Chinese food? Um, like yeah. Korean Chinese, Indian Chinese, Peruvian Chinese. So Indian Chinese, um, Hakka, is that I wish the thing what they call it? No, it's called Manchurian. Oh, Manchurian? Manchurian cuisine. Manchurian cuisine. And I think like, I think Hakka could be like, uh, or Hokkien. Not Hokkien. But no, Hakka cuisine is like Southeast Asian Chinese Indian, right? Mm. Are you looking it up? Yeah. I feel like it's Southeast Asian. But like the true like Indian Chinese food is called Manchurian cuisine, mm-hmm. and they do stuff like uh, stir fried cauliflower. Imagine, imagine like Cantonese food. Imagine like what like like immigrant Ch- I can't do, like imagine like Chinese American food, but with like Indian spices. So they mm-hmm. would like deep fried cauliflower. So they there's one called Gobi Manchurian. Which they were deep fried cauliflower and then toss that in like a thick sauce that uh, that is both sweet and savory and but they also have like a lot of like Indian spices in there. So that's that's like the Gobi Manchurian is like the most familiar I am to it. Mm-hmm. Um, it was actually invented in the seventies. This guy like worked at a country club in Mumbai. Um, I think it was back in the days back when they still called it Bombay over there. But Mumbai, and basically one of the customers was like, you know, cook me something different, cook me something that they can't make anywhere else. And he pretty much made like Cantonese, Cantonese Indian fusion, and it was mm-hmm. it was really really popular. Yeah. Um, in Korea, the Chinese food is like really different too. It's not like um, Chinese food that you'd find in China. So. Back one day, at um, Chinese immigrants like working in like Korean like railroads and things, um, they made jajangmyeon and jjampong. Um, and if you've never had jajangmyeon, so they have a dish called like jajang in China, but it's completely different um, from the one you find in China. It is um, thick chewy noodles topped with black bean sauce, and the black bean sauce has ton of um, pork, onion. Like zucchini, um, like sometimes peas and things like that. And then you like mix it all together. And this like black sauce is almost like stewy, sweet, um, savory mixture, but it's really, really good. Um, the onions like make it sweeter and the pork makes it like really savory. Um, the black bean gives it like a like, deep umami. Um, Paired together with the chewy noodle, whatever it's like a move-in date, everybody orders like food from like Korean Chinese restaurant and it gets delivered like really fast and it's super cheap and it's super yummy. And then there's also jampong, which is like this like spicy seafood broth with a ton of different vegetables like onion, zucchini, um, and whatever other vegetables like they decide to put in. And it usually has like squid, mussels clams sometimes shrimp um with the same like thick chewy noodles um with lots of lots of chili powder in it and it's super spicy and those are like the two signature like um korean chinese like dishes there are chinese like there so there are chinese communities in korea itself just like there are like korean communities inside Mm -hmm. china right i wonder like how they're if they have like specialized cuisines within those communities, I'm sure they do. It'd probably be cool to like explore. Mm-mm. And then um, the fried rice you get at Korean Chinese restaurants different too. The fried rice would always come with an omelet, and the omelet would really? have yeah. It's huh. not like an egg for young, but it's like uh, yeah. It and it's not stir scrub. fried egg bits like you find in regular. No, it's like a whole like omelet um, huh. that top the fried rice, and the um, omelet would usually have like different vegetables, mostly onion, 
and mm. like zucchini and things like that. And then it comes with the um the black bean sauce that they put on the noodle. And then mm. you mix it all together with this like rice, omelet, and the black bean sauce. Mm. It's really yummy. I'm making beef tendon for dinner tonight with soup. Mm. I'm drinking despair for dinner tonight. Despair? Yeah. Lonely with a side of loneliness. With a side of and loneliness, tears, and yeah. <laughs> so you don't have plans? No. We should actually like film this, um, cause like and, and, and like post it for the podcast one day. Like when we ate the super spicy topoki, mm-hmm. and we should actually do it. I mean, I was fine. You are dying. Um, we were both dying. Excuse me. No, we I was were fine. both dying. We you should were have dying. like our version. I was not dying. No, I was dying. But you were dying too. Mm, I don't remember that. You were a sweaty girl. I have some footage. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> Stop gaslighting me, Kim. <laughs> I'm not gaslighting. I'm just being the truth. Uh-huh. Oh, and then, um, have you ever had Chifa? Yes. Uh, I've been to Peru twice, and Chifa is pretty great. It still has, like, Chifa cuisine still has kind of, like, an old-timey retro Chinese immigrant cuisine feel, where it's, like, lots of stir-fries, that general flavor profile of, like, uh, savory and salty, but uh, their their famous dish is called Lomo Saltado, Mm-hmm. And it's like a beef stir fry with French fries in it, it's which so is good. <laughs> it's so good. Oh my god! So like, imagine like a regular beef stir fry. So like, you velvet the beef, so it's like super tender. It's probably like flank steak, and then you stir fry it in with probably you marinate it with soy sauce and white pepper. And I'm, mm-hmm. this is me just like guessing, and maybe five, five spice. Um, and then I think you put in chopped like bell peppers maybe some peas some some like pieces of charred onion and then you stir fry them all together and then you add in french fries and then you stir fry the french fries in so that there's like the soy sauce white pepper a little bit of sugar maybe some oyster Mm -hmm. sauce like the gravy that forms from that coats the fry so in in like a really weird way it's like a stir fry poutine yeah, um, without cheese. I mean, like you know what? You could put cheese in there, and that would be pretty damn good. But um, and, like, make a true like Peruvian poutine. Make it happen, somebody. <laughs> um, and then you still eat it over rice. That is like that's big dick energy right there. It's like <laughs> I'm gonna put French fries in this stir fry and still eat it with rice. Yeah, when you're eating potatoes with rice, like you know (laughs) it's so good they don't care it's just the best (laughs) oh Oh, yeah when did we have that we had that for your birthday last year Uh, yeah um one of our friend bao he got a huge takeout from um the peruvian restaurant on his way to big bear and then he brought it over and we ate it for like three days because the portions were so huge so big so so very big i saw on tiktok this one person was like ordered like a catering set and use that to meal prep eh. that was brilliant so it, it was like smart. just like grilled vegetable grilled chicken grilled meat and stuff like that and she just like packaged it and just like uh-huh. put it in the fridge and freezer and ate it for like a week i understand the idea of like the meal prep but i just can't get down with it i've tried it and to me it is like you're eating the same thing every day but you taste yeah. it as it goes as it gets worse and worse each day I mean, unless you meal prep curry, you it would taste better and better each time. It depends too. It depends on what kind of vegetables are in the curry. That's like true. If, That's if true. If there were like potatoes and carrots, it get mushier and mushier. Yeah, but the flavors would get better. So yeah, I think the trick is would be to like cook them. S- I mean, you can't really cook them separate because it's a, that's the whole point of the curry to cook it all together. I'm one of the people. I don't mind it so much. Like, I will eat the same thing over and over again if I like it enough and it is, like, healthy enough. Um, I can shut off my brain that, like, the part of my brain that requires my food to, like, be, like, an event. Like, I could just, I, if it's good enough yeah. and I can survive up with it, that's fine. 
I think that just was my college years. My rule is like, don't swallow unless it's healthy or unless it's delicious. And yeah. It's a good thing you live in yeah. LA. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but I would just hate like the thought of like getting full on like mediocre food that wasn't even healthy. But I, that that's the trade off. Like I would, it has to at least be good for you. Yeah. If it's not going to be great, I think like one of the th the thing that I consume more when I'm in New York, I drink more smoothies than I do ever anywhere else. Because <laughs> it's such an easy thing to have on the go, and they have a lot of good smoothie and juice bars over there. Well, same with LA too. So yeah, but smoothies for me is like a walking around thing. Who walks around in LA? Well, you could. I try. I try. It's it's. <laughs> I don't feel safe walking around in LA. I get run almost run over so many times. Yeah. <laughs> LA's just not made for walking. It really isn't, which is too bad. Well, your area when it build that when they finish building that metro, that's mm -hmm. not gonna be that bad. That's gonna be pretty cool. Yeah. If you take the metro. <laughs> Back to Chinese food. <laughs> fun. One time I tweeted this um and it went semi viral. Italian restaurants can make like ravioli, barely filled with anything, and all they have to mm -hmm. do is just, like saute it in butter and charge like 20, 30 bucks. And people are like, oh, this homemade pasta is delicious. But Chinese restaurants, like, we take the same shell, fill it to the brim with like so much like meat and stuffing. And like, our dumplings are plump. They are, mm -hmm. they're fat little babies. Yes. It's like raviolis, but like times 10. And yeah. heaven forbid if they try to charge more than ten dollars, people would be like, "You know, these dumplings no, are so expensive." People would be up in arms. They just like, well, no, that's 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 like the bias and the prejudice again. Also, I feel like the Italians are pretty good about deciding how much their labor is worth, so they feel like they'll charge. We just have to start doing that for our food, and people have to start getting used to like, you know, like my labor is valuable too. <laughs> That being said, we've also done a really good job in teaching machines how to do it for us. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, the Chinese technology, the manufacturing technology for, like, making dumplings and stuff is so good now. Like, XCJ, like, those aren't handmade. You can tell. They're all so perfect. Like, you know, I mean, I mean we can talk about that, but, but like, this is, this is also like a pre this is like a premium product. We're talking about like oh, normal yeah. restaurants, you know? Right. Well, the restaurants, they all buy it from a lot of the restaurants. They don't make them by hand. A lot of restaurants, they buy it from these companies like Wei Chun, um, just simply because like they're so good. They're the ones, uh -huh. the brands that I buy for my place, for like for my home uh -huh. are like the restaurant packet brands that a lot of them do it at their restaurants. Those delicious, thick, chewy dumplings. Oh, they're so good. They're so mm. good. There are like some like manufactured Chinese dumplings that taste better than like that are more satisfying than handmade pasta. The dumplings are amazing. Every country has like their own variation of dumpling and like it all slaps. Yes. Except America probably has like the weakest dumpling. Oh, is that the one where they just put like little balls of dough into a soup? Yeah, like a chicken and dumpling. Like chicken and dumpling. Like, <laughs> yeah. And then it's just like a bowl of like white, you know? Yeah. yeah. You know, actually though, like Chinese people have a version of that. <laughs> no, well, um, do they all do, but yeah. like no, what we consider that dumpling exact in America. Same thing though, of that exact same. So it's like little dough, balls of dough. I forgot what it's called, but of course we've made it into something that requires you to have a lot of skill to do. What a chef will do is they'll take like this big plate of just dough and into some boiling mm -hmm. water. And they shave and they, it in, yeah, right? They they shave it in, and it's the same thing. But like the easy way to do that is to just like take your hands and wet it and put it in some flour, and then just like rub them over the pot mm -hmm. of boiling water, and like it's the same thing as chicken and dumplings. If you make chicken and dumplings, do it that way because they'll turn into tiny noodles instead. Like spatzo. Yeah. <laughs> no, but then like, if you feel like an American dumplings compared to like. The momos or mandu or samosas yeah. or empanadas, you know, just 
It's so underwhelming in comparison. What do we have? Oh, uh, we have like I guess turnover. Does that count as dumplings? Dessert, like apple I turnover. Guess. Is that more like a hand pie? I mean, just a dump form of dumpling. Hand pies are dumplings. Okay, hand pies are dumplings. Hand pie. Okay, turnovers are not bad then. <laughs> but um, are they like more superior compared to like the um, other variations from around the world? No, girl, they're just the best we got. If <laughs> it, <laughs> then you'll do. You'll do. <laughs> You'll have to do. Well, um, do you have any um, Chinese food trauma growing up? Uh, oh, so when I was younger, I think, like, my parents used to have these, like, f- shrimp feasts. Mm-hmm. Where I think there was this, there was this dish called, like, dancing shrimp. And, like, basically, you took a bunch of raw shrimp and you'd cover it with some kind of alcohol. It might have been cognac, but it was something that lit on Mm -hmm. fire. Mm -hmm. And mind you, this was, like, the 80s. So, people were wild. And so, you'd have these shrimp and, like, douse in alcohol and they would light it on fire and they would jump and, like, fly in the air and stuff like that. And I think I've been hit. And I think I was traumatized. There's a reason why I never ate shrimp in my childhood, and I think it was because of that. Because I think I was actually hit with a flaming shrimp once. Oh my god! And also, like, like my nickname, my childhood nickname was Nono for whatever reason. And my grandma would call shrimps like for some reason. My grandmother would call shrimps like "Hello Nonos," and so <laughs> I don't know. I had this like weird mm-hmm. association with shrimp, and yeah. So that that that's like a trauma of mine. But now I'll eat them. Now I'll eat them. The shrimp is great when I don't have to peel them. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I mean, like, tiger prawns. When they're, like, big and substantial, mm-hmm. that's worth the effort. If yeah. they're, like, tiny, then, like, don't waste my time. Mm. What about you? Like, do you have any, like, favorite Chinese foods? Oh, Chinese cuisine is so good. But, um, one of my favorite styles is definitely, like, Hong Kong-style barbecue. Um... Oh, and yeah. um, to be exact, um, the pork belly, because something about the way um, they roast the pork belly, the skin is like really crispy and the meat oh, is really yeah, yeah, juicy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but then yeah. um, I don't know if it's like been in brine or something because like the meat is like salty in the inside. Yeah. Yeah, they do. I think the way that they do it is they marinate the meat overnight first, but then they mm-hmm. leave the skin exposed so that it can mm-hmm. air dry. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like the marinade itself is like soy sauce, Chinese wine, salt, and like a lot of spy five spice. So it's very fragrant. Yeah. I love that. And then a lot of the places were also, um, they sprinkle like a little like sweet soy sauce on top and then they serve it with like a little gailan. And like maybe like half a vegetable today with it, yeah, yeah. Like that whole combo is like the perfect like lunch for me. I think like my, f- I can't. Ch- it's hard for me to choose. Um, some of my favorites would be definitely, uh, Shenzhen Bao, which is like the soup dumplings, but it's crunchy because it's mm-hmm. like pan fried instead of, and the, it's more doughy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I like. Uh, stir-fried potatoes like so they'll stir-fry potatoes and treat it like a vegetable in when I well they're for their vegetables but like when I say that I mean like they're still crispy when they stir fry mm-hmm. them so like they're stir-fried the way you would stir-fry string beans and they're still like kind of crunchy oh is it the one and, where it's like a white potato and there's like no special seasoning or powder on top but it's just like it's vinegar vinegar chilies yeah, yeah vinegar chilies and Szechuan peppercorns Mm-hmm. Um, yes. So that's one of my favorites. Um, and then also stir fried tomato and egg. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's simple, like but also really good. So simple. So good. And not, you don't get a lot of tomato dishes, um, in Chinese cuisine. Also oxtail, o- Chinese oxtail. Mm-hmm. I also really like, um, the Chinese dumplings, not the dumplings, um, the donut. 
Did you dip it to like soy milk? Oh, we ate that yesterday. Um, I forgot the Chinese name for it. But <laughs> Little John calls it deep fried ghost. Why um, ghost? Because the word, it's like a pun. Hold on. Mm -hmm. If you actually Google deep fried ghost, it gives you the actual thing. Uh, well, why Why ghost? Yo tiao. So oil. Because I think, okay, the Cantonese dialect has an ever Yo. Yo jia. Yo. Yo. Oh, shit. My Chinese is so bad. Yo ma gui. <laughs> Something. So yeah. it's. So in Cantonese, that actually translates to old fried ghost, oil fried ghost. Oh, okay. Yo cha gui. So I don't know why we call it that, but mm -hmm. little John calls it deep fried ghost and right. it's his favorite. But we dip it in kanji. Mm -hmm. And you can buy it really easily. Like they buy it pre-prepared and you can just bake it in the oven for like three minutes and then you can just eat it. I want some now. <laughs> Especially um, when you go to dim sum too, and you get like the rice rolls with the donuts inside. Those are also really good oh, too. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The the steamed rice, the mm -hmm. steamed rice wrapping. When you and then you dip it in that sweet soy sauce. Yeah, unmatched. The, the unmatched. texture it is exquisite. So good, slippery, fried, crunchy, fresh, mm -hmm. oily. Ah. Oh. Everything. It's everything. It's literally like a carb wrapped in carb, but it's so worth it. <laughs> yeah. It re we're good with that. We're we're like shamelessly eating carbs. <laughs> oh, I mean, I don't feel shameful if we're eating carbs. I don't either. Mm -mm. Uh, when well, you come visit, we'll have to go get some dim sum for sure. Yeah. For sure. Where do you go? Um, There are several places in LA, but there's one in particular that I like. What's DTF? Din Tai Fung. Oh, um, Din Tai Fung is, it's good, but like, it's kind of, it's good. It is kind of like overhyped. Yeah, I agree. You know, like, the wait is always like an hour long and, yep. like, I'm not trying to wait an hour long for some dumplings. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree. When I found out people were waiting that long to go, mm -hmm. I mean, I used to go when they only had like a Hong Kong location a long yeah. time ago, but... And not very many people knew about it, but yeah. now it's just like it's too much. All that for some like soup dumplings and the cucumber salad. Yeah, I like the places where they like bring the carts around. The only downside to those places, like as soon as you sit down, you see like five carts like rushing towards you, and you have to make a decision really quick, and you feel a little pressured. And sometimes like the cart ladies won't give you all the options that she has. She's just trying yeah. to get rid of like whatever dishes that she has the most of. And I'm like, yep. lady, open the top to every <laughs> single one. Like, I want to know what I'm like, what my options are. And they'll also like, s s kind of like save the good stuff for people who they think will appreciate it. So if you don't uh -huh. really look like you know what you're talking about, uh -huh. they're not going to serve you. Yo. They like, I, that's one thing I love about Chinese waiters. It's like, they will flat up just tell you like, oh, you don't, you don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> You don't what want if, that. What if I do? Like, no, give me the fucking chicken feet. I do <laughs> want that. Like, no, you don't. I think they're more afraid of you sending it back than every than anything. They're they're like kind of like tired or they they have trauma of like people who don't know what they're ordering sending food back and not mm. paying for it, which would lead them to like be like, no, I'm not giving you this. Yeah. But chicken feet, if you've never had it, try it. It's so good. It is so good. Chicken feet is so good. Do you want to take one more little break? I have to go pretty soon. Oh, you do? Because um, my DJ lesson. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. Tell me about your DJ lesson. Oh, so... um, I think I have pretty good taste in music, and um, I've always wanted to DJ, so I made it happen. So I've been taking DJ lessons this past year, and... Now I'm my first DJ gig next week in Chicago. Ah, oh, are you serious? Yeah. When? Next Friday. Where is it? At this place called Bottom Lounge. 
Bottom Lounge in Chicago, <laughs> and you're getting flat out to DJ? Yeah. That's so cool. Congratulations. Thank I you. I mean, my, my uh, K-pop playlists are, are only the, the way they are because, because of you, so, and I think I only know about Jesse Ware because of you, so mm. that's, that's a fair assessment. You do have really <laughs> good taste in music. Do you, did you like Jesse Ware's newest song she just released? No, I haven't heard it. Pearls is so good. Is it good? It's, She's an iconic. Mm-hmm. How amazing would it be if we could combine our podcasts one day? Oh my god! We need to bet. We need to get big enough to be invited to her house. Honestly, like, I, oh my god! Imagine her like mom cooking dinner for us. Her mom cooking dinner for us. Oh my gosh! And we would we would bring something. We would mm-hmm. bring something. It's like oh, we brought some stuff too. It'll be like a little potluck. No. Uh, no. If you guys don't know, Jesse Ware has a podcast, and they just cook and chat. Mm-hmm. And she has famous people over for lunch. It's amazing. Like actual famous people. Like actual fame, like Diplo came for charcuterie or something like that. <laughs> like Scary Spice came over. <laughs> <laughs> Not Scary Spice. So wait, you should have Chinese food for dinner then. Maybe it will. What would you have? What can you order there that's good? Pretty much mm-hmm. anything. Well, does it say about LA? Like, there's a lot of good Chinese food here, but they're all in, like, St. Gabriel, like, Alhambra area, which uh, is, like, I mean, it's not far, but it's, like, 30-minute car ride from here, you know? Yeah. So I went to the Meat Fresh, thinking mm-hmm. about you, I was, but they closed for renovations. What? Yeah. They Don't, just opened, but then they said, I saw, so Meat Fresh is this Taiwanese dessert chain that... Kim is very jealous of that I live within like 15 minutes of one and he has she has to drive like an hour mm-hmm. uh, to go and they have like mochi in like sweet grass jelly soup and stuff like that. It's really, really good. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, they closed for renovations because they were going to, I guess, improve their equipment and serve more kinds of things like Whoa. their new sandwiches and stuff. So, oh, yeah. so I'm assuming they couldn't get by just some selling desserts in Detroit. Probably not. Probably not, which is a shame. Damn. But at least they're staying open. All right. Well, that is our show. Uh, thanks for listening in. I got to do the intro and the outro today. Uh, Ta-da! How, how does it feel? Do you feel like you're part of this podcast family? I do. I feel very empowered. <laughs> I feel very empowered. <laughs> thanks for listening, everyone. Don't forget to like and subscribe. A share. I'm so good at this. Yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye.